Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, I'm going to be looking at physical changes and chemical changes. So if you weren't here for that lecture, make sure you follow along in your notes. Okay, so let's just define these two things to start with. So what is a physical change? Physical changes are any changes that you can think of where you are not really changing the composition of the substance that you start with. So you can think of physical and chemical changes as being before and after pictures. You have a before picture, you have an after picture. But in physical changes, if you were to zoom in on the chemicals inside of whatever you were looking at, they've stayed the same. They haven't actually changed. Whereas in chemical changes, you actually do make a new substance. So you are altering the matter somehow, and now you're getting something totally and completely new. And so that would be an example, again, of a chemical change as opposed to a physical change. A lot of times people say, oh, well, physical changes can be undone and chemical changes can't. That isn't true. Chemical changes a lot of times can be undone. It just either takes a crazy amount of either energy or effort to do it, or it's just not really practical. Um, physical changes, on the other hand, sometimes those seem like they could be permanent. I mean, you know, let's picture you making a salad and you're chopping up some lettuce. It's still lettuce before and after. It's just, you know, you chopped it into pieces. So that's a physical change. You haven't changed the composition of the lettuce, but you can't really glue the lettuce little pieces back together again to make that, you know, chunk of lettuce that you started with. Um, but anyway, let's go into modeling for this. So let's say we're making a model of a physical change versus a chemical change. So the first thing you need to do is we need a simple example. Let's just go with ice melting. It's really easy. It's something that everybody knows. We can draw pretty simply. So that is my ice cube. Notice that I have my H2O molecules in my ice, and they are all kind of organized in this nice little crystal here. So you can see I've got my red oxygens. I've got my um, white or gray, I guess, kind of. Um, hydrogens, and they are all symmetrically spread out. Now, when I melt that ice, what's going to happen are those water molecules are going to spread out and they're no longer going to be organized. They're no longer organized. That looks different and has different properties. So to go from ice in its solid form to water as a liquid, that would be an example of a physical change. It's still H2O. Notice I didn't actually break any bonds or anything there. It's just now they're spread out more. What about a chemical change? So let's look at rust. Rust forming, you're probably aware of the fact that in order for something to rust, it has to have iron in it. And so iron is Fe. But how do you form rust then? How do you turn iron into rust? You need to add something to it. And what you add is oxygen. When you add oxygen, what you get is this, Fe2O3. That's iron three oxide. And so notice the starting material is different than the ending material. You started with Fe, but now we have Fe2O3. That means that oxygen's been incorporated into it, and now it's a different substance. How can you, you know, look at something and say, hey, I think that's a physical change, or I think that's a chemical change? Well, for physical changes, there are certain things that give you clues. Now, these this is not an extensive list, and this is not like, you know, the, you know, the the end all for physical and chemical changes, but it can give you a clue. So the first thing you can look for is if you're changing the texture of something. Let's say I take, you know, I don't know, a piece of paper and I crumple it up. The texture is different, but it's still paper. So that's a physical change. Another thing, painting, coloring, or dyeing something, okay? If you paint a bike, you know, great. Um, it's still a bike. Um, you just added a coat of paint to it. And you can probably scrape that paint off. Um, coloring something, coloring a piece of paper, it would be a pain to undo that but it's, you could undo it. Um, same thing with dyeing. A lot of times people think, oh, well, if I add a drop of food coloring to water, look at how different the water looks. But in reality, you can separate again, if you had to, the water from the dye. Changing the shape of something. You know, I have a cube of ice and I decide to make an ice sculpture out of it. That's still ice. Changing the state of matter. So if you boil something, if you melt something, it's still the same thing. And then if you dissolve something, and that's the one that people a lot of times have trouble with because they think if you dissolve something, it looks like it disappears. Sometimes properties change. But in reality, if I take a cup of water and I add a spoonful of sugar to it, I could get that sugar back out again. Um, all I'm doing is I'm spreading those crystals of sugar throughout the water molecules. And so it's dissolving and it's disappearing. Okay, But it's not really disappearing for good. It's just hidden by that water. 
What about chemical changes? What are the signs of a chemical change? First one, a new color forms, okay? This isn't you dyeing something, this isn't you coloring something or painting it, but if you mix two things together and all of a sudden it changes color, that is most likely going to be a chemical change. Lighter radiation is released. So light is obviously, you know, something you can see. Radiation is something you really can't see for the most part. Um, so it could be a feeling though. It could be like warmth uh, or cold. That would be a form of radiation. It could be something really dangerous like x-rays or gamma rays, I guess, but we're not going to do anything crazy like that in class. If the temperature changes on its own, okay, so that's another important thing is the on its own. Please underline that if you don't. Uh, you're probably going to make a mistake because a lot of times people say, oh, well, I heated it up and the temperature changed. Yeah, because you heated it up. But if you mix two things together and they heat up on their own, that would be a chemical process. Whereas you heating up a cup of water, that's a physical process, okay? You are just adding energy already to it. Whereas chemical changes, if the temperature is changing on its own, bonds are being broken or bonds are being formed. And so now the temperature of that, like you know, of the new stuff is different than the original substance. A new smell is released. Obviously, you know, if something new is appearing, that's a chemical thing. A new substance is formed. If it starts to clump up or you start to get other weird stuff floating around and whatever you're mixing together, that could be the sign of a chemical change. And last but not least, bubbling or foaming due to a new gas. So if you mix things together and all of a sudden it starts bubbling, chances are that's a chemical change. If on the other hand, you know, you add soap to water and you add a little bit of more water to it and oh look, these bubbles are forming, obviously bubbles are forming because you added soap to it. So Again, physical and chemical changes, this is not an extensive list, but it's at least a starting point to give you an idea of whether something is physical or chemical. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, otherwise, that's the end of the lesson.